So you want to be an owner operator, huh? Well, maybe not last year, but at least this year and most times starting out with one truck, you better learn how to fix your own shit and want to get dirty. Uh, you know, uh, I'm going to say I have it better than most. Uh, I have access to a shop and uh, tools, uh, mostly my own, but uh, power washer and stuff. So that's uh, that's a great benefit for me. So, But if you don't, it doesn't mean you can't keep doing this. You can do your own thing. Um, it's just going to be dirtier and harder. But to be honest, looking under here, it's going to be dirty anyway, even power washing this thing. So what I'm doing today is I'm changing the starter. Uh, I want to show you this Mickey Mouse crap they got going on under here. Um, this is things you got to look for when you're an owner-operator. They had a uh, wire loom covering all this stupid bullshit. So when I looked under here, you know, I, I didn't crawl underneath the car. It was, I mean, the truck, it was a gravel parking lot when I looked at this thing. But um, there's things that I didn't see that were... Uh, that are concerning and uh, also led to burning a hole in the side of the starter and probably the starter also started to take a shit. So I'm going to turn this camera around. Um, also, I got a few clips that I already took, so I don't know. I'm going to try to piece them in here. So hopefully this video comes out somewhat professional. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's turn this baby around and I'll show you all the... So this is what you can do to keep DOT off you, or at least... Uh, you know, saying anything about oil leaks. This damn truck's like, what, 25 years old, 30 years old? Take some purple power, get yourself a foam cannon, wash this thing, let it sit on there for a while, wash it all off. Get all the oil leaks off of it and everything. Put some, put some Lucas Stop leak in it, slow the oil leaks down, or maybe even stop them, which so far it's been working great. And get under here. I'm going to be replacing the starter. So I would like to not be covered in old oil and stuff. So, get a little foam can in there from Walmart. And you just have some fun. Just like that. Spray everything down, let it sit. And power wash it off. That's how you do that. And then next time when DOT gets under here, which they were just under here, you know, he ain't gonna say, he's like, yeah, a little bit of oil leak under there. It's all old, but you know, none of it's dripping, so we let you go, but just to let you know. And that was basically code for, we're gonna get you one of these days. That's what that was. So, clean a damn thing up under here, make it look like, you know, only a 10-year-old truck or a five-year-old truck instead of 25 or 30 year old truck so I'm gonna uh gonna catch you guys later oh, I got the side I'll be working on done that side uh kicked out but that's all I need is that side anyway so I'm gonna probably try to take a extra piece of wood and stick it up underneath uh that one tire on the other side and uh yeah we should be good to go these ain't Ain't going nowhere. So, hopefully I'm not dead when you see me next. <laughs> nah, they ain't going nowhere. So, all right, let's let's uh, let's get this party on the road. Right, first of all, yeah, it's a little wet still. I said I just power washed it. This, well, I ripped it all off already, but you see this wire loom here? They had this covered in wire loom. So just taking a quick glance, unless you got a creeper and you can get this truck up when you first buy this crap. You ain't gonna see this uh, freaking redneck, I don't even know, that's worse than redneck uh, crap going on here. And, you know, they bent brackets out of the way and stuff, things rubbing on stuff. So if you don't take care of this, you see that? Those are airlines that go to your, uh, I'm pretty sure they're airlines, that go to your transmission there. Guess what? When you can't shift, uh, that's a problem. So I'm going to have to, oh geez, so as you can see, even power washing this didn't do too much, uh, a little bit there and stuff, but as you can see, I get to play in all this old, old oil here, and uh, 
yeah that's that's freaking phenomenal yeah that's top-notch work there so anyway we're gonna uh gonna replace that star there you can see i already replaced that wire that's of course looks like the damn uh looks like the uh shrink wrap decided to already bust open on it but uh, as you can see these wires well, that wire that I replaced is rubbing a hole in the side of that starter right there. Let me see if I get the light over there. And probably also didn't help the starter, so there's a couple times this thing's been hard starting. So we're going to pull that out and uh, have a good old time here. It's going to be fun. So I'm going to disconnect the battery and everything. I'm going to try to fix that, uh, that, that fucking crimp there that I did. And I guess that's going to get wrapped in electrical tape for right now because I'm not going to pull that up. Well, unless I can slide the uh, shrink wrap from up there down. And then we're going to connect this wire too. I'm going to make a connection there, a butt connection. Probably cut it there and uh, make a butt connection with the tools and everything that I bought. Uh, this is still going to probably be cheaper than having somebody else do all this because uh, you need a hell of a crimp tool to do this. And thanks to Amazon, I was able to get, like, everything I needed for about 150 bucks. So, uh, the starter, the starter actually came from Parks Geek. Uh, they're the only ones that were able to ship it to me pretty quick. Um, and that was, like, 280 bucks. So, hopefully that thing's not a big piece of junk, uh, considering most stars I've been seeing on there for, like, around 300 to 500 well, 350 to maybe 500. So, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I guess when I come back here, I'll be showing you uh, me crimping these wires because I'm pretty sure everyone knows how to disconnect the truck battery. At least I hope so. Because if you don't, uh, you might want to rethink about being an owner operator. So, uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so, I ended up having two batteries replaced over at TA. And I thought it was batteries. And I put them in and... This wire has been in there since I bought the truck. So I assumed whoever put it on there knew what they were doing. It looked like it was at least one gauge or whatnot. And I never had a problem with it. But I guess since the starter's starting to go, and I was trying to start it a few times the other day, and to where the starter was smoking a few times, uh, apparently this is the weakest link in here. And uh, yeah, it didn't really bother put a nick on the battery right there put a nick on my uh inverter lines that luckily didn't go through then i guess i'm gonna have to wrap with electrical tape but this could have burned down the truck i guess uh yeah so definitely always use the right gauge i didn't think nothing of it because i just figured it was between two two batteries so i was like about how much how much juice could really go through there did a let's see w1 what the hell do they call it zero one gauge or whatnot wouldn't take but uh apparently a lot so this is trash so uh i guess uh i guess i'm going to be making myself a wire probably out of my amp i mean uh, my, uh i guess that's amp wire out of amp wire so yeah that's just a psa there uh bull crap that goes on with uh buying a used truck that you don't think about little things so I got more wire right here. Yeah, I could use this. Yeah, let me do that again. Do that'll work. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. So I guess I have to go get some terminals and make a make a connection between between the battery here. So I guess that's what we'll be doing next. That should be about big enough, I guess. A little zoom in. There, there we go. All right. After videotaping that little retarded mess with that wire let's see here all right so i got the two wires off that's a 9 19 millimeter that green wire goes underneath that i just want to show what's here so i know what i'm doing there's a ground wire that goes from there uh over to the block and then it looks like the ground wire that goes to the frame so I'm try to clean all these stupid wires up so hopefully the next video here's me 
uh, ratcheting these bolts off if I can get the uh, little tripod under here. So I'll be back. All right, so the old starter's out, and boy, was that fun. This is fucking 10 times, it's about like twice as big as the old one, I mean the new one, and uh, it looks totally different. Uh, I already got the new one in there, I'm not going to show it to you, but you'll get the drift. Um, it probably weighs about, the new one probably weighs about 30 pounds less than the old one too. Boy, was that a lot easier getting there. And the room, the room, oh my gosh, the room. I was actually able to get a socket on the one over here and zap that in with, with my, uh, the Walt. And I got all these in. Yeah, I know there's lock washers, but for some reason, the lock washers fell off of these bolts. And I can't get them back on. So, I even took a hammer. I didn't want to screw up the thread, so I wasn't going to try to really hammer them on. So, I got one lock washer still on that bolt. And I don't think these are going to come the hell out. Well, at least I hope not. They're, they're, they're in there. I impacted them in there pretty decent. Um, nothing crazy, though. I used the, uh, let me see the socket size I used on here. These were, oh, let me find it here. Is this it? Preferably a 12 point, but I only had six points on me right now. The, uh, this is 11, 11 16 these bolts are. And make sure you have a mini torch, because the top one, I didn't have much room to get a bar in or anything. The top one was tight as a mother F. And uh, I had to heat that up with a little mini, you know, blue torch. You know, like your propane torch, you find, you know, you do like soldering with pipe, pipe and stuff with. I heated that damn thing up for like a good 10 minutes until, until I uh, got it off. Luckily, I was able to, I, I had this little DeWalt electric impact and I was able to get that out of there like that. Because like I said, there was no real room for any torque or leverage on anything. So, alright, that's up there. Uh... Next, I get to play with these wires. This freaking rig job they got going on here. And, uh, yeah, that should be awesome here. So, uh, let me, uh, get up here and, um, guess I'll get all these wires on the ground. The ground's going up back. Um, the top of the starter here, I guess I'll show the top of the starter. I might as well just do this, get down here. top of the starter has another relay on it oh the lights in the way you see that bolt right there on top of the relay that's where you hook your uh, your 12 volt oh where is it? your 12 volt ignition wire let me see if I can find it in here is this it oh, no that's not it This one right here. It's nice, I don't know, probably like, what's this, eight, six or eight gauge ignition wire. It's gonna go right, right on top of that now, down there. So, oh, actually right here. It's gonna go right on top of this relay. So you're technically gonna have like two relays now. Um, and then the rest pretty much go where you took them off at. Uh, that's how that goes, so hopefully I'll be back here. Uh, I'll show you how I'm crimping these wires because I'm not running brand new wire all the way down the truck through the frame and into the batteries. So I'm gonna butt connect them. Uh, let's see where the butt connector's at. I got nice big butt connectors from, I think it's called batteries.com, but that's what we're gonna use. I'm gonna butt connect the uh, wires together we're gonna call it a day so I'll be back here and I don't know probably about 15 minutes I'll end up being under there cutting those wires all right I guess I'm gonna put my tripod under here but you know what it would have mattered anyway because all you would see is me running back and forth in and out you might as well get to see first person angle how fun it is to get up on under here all right well I already cut the wire out of here in fact, the whole thing fell because there was only one zip tie holding the whole thing up. Yep, one zip tie. One little zip tie was holding that whole cable set up. And then it was pulling down on these, which bent that bracket right there. Oh, let me get on the right way. 
bent that bracket down right there. I'm starting to rub these. I think I'm pretty sure these are either I'm pretty sure those are air hoses. Air hoses to the uh transmission or or maybe they're cooler lines. You know, I think these are cooler lines. I don't want to sound like an idiot. I just I just didn't know a manual transmission has a cooler. But I guess it probably does. So as you can see, they're pretty much almost touching. So I'm gonna bend that bracket up. These lines get pushed up anyway and sit practically underneath the starter. So so get that like that. I'll put a zip tie or something there so they stay there. And there we go. Don't have to worry about them rubbing through now. So do all this right here in front of you. This tool right here. It's a hydraulic, like a 16 pound, 16 ton hydraulic uh crimping tool. It was I think $64 on Amazon. I'll uh, try to put the links in the description. I'm gonna cut this crap right here. Let's see here. Try to get it right there. Cut that real nice. Oh man, I got like a thousand zip ties on it. This is the stuff you get when you buy a used semi truck. <laughs> Bunch of rigged Mickey Mouse stuff. Let's see if I can get it around the, the zip tie here. Alright, we'll try that. All right, I can't cut through double, double that apparently. So I guess I'll just cut the red line right there. There we go. Some good gauge there. Now I didn't get a stripper, but you know, strippers cost too much. We're gonna, I guess what I'm going to try to do is see one of these butt connectors, fit this, I guess we'll get the biggest ones out. Man, it is hot. When I'm done this, I'm going to show you what I look like, just to show you that this isn't, you know, being mechanic, being an owner operator isn't glamorous, that's for sure, I'm covered in... Alright, I'm gonna use this bag. Cans are so greasy. This isn't being an owner operator isn't the most glamorous thing ever. So we're gonna line this up here. So I wanna cut it about right there. Right where I had it actually. Well, how about that? That was great. Good the first time. So we gotta put that down. And I am gonna hold the rope here. I'm gonna spin this thing around. Don't wanna to go too deep. You don't wanna you don't wanna get all the uh cut the wires too. You see, you just wanna get through the insulation. That's all. There we go. Get every wire in here. If we can. There you go, nice and uh, nice and far in there. So now I'm gonna get this tool out. Yeah, I'll move this out a little back, back a little bit. Get this tool out, see if I can't find the right gauge. That just threads off. I'm sure ourselves is not the right gauge. I don't know exactly what these numbers mean. 
I was hoping they would be like gauges, but I think they're probably in metric as what they are. So I'm just going to get a nice feel for it here, I guess. I guess that looks good. So this is a four, this is, I think they call it four double O or four aught or something. That's what this wire gauge is, four aught. It's not your everyday automotive wire, that's for sure. So I'm gonna put that down in here. Worst comes the worst, I can always crimp it more. All right. This is gonna be a lot funner out of the truck, but I got it so high off the ground, it shouldn't be too bad. I'm hoping that might actually be a little too small. Let me try the 95s. Like I said I can always go go smaller. But breaking it, breaking it ain't gonna help us at all. Alright, we'll do that. We'll try that. That looks even too small maybe. You know what? I'm gonna go to up this 120. I'm, like I said, I'm assuming this is in centimeters or metric or whatnot. I wish it was said like uh, four slash zero zero or whatever four slash zero double O or whatever the heck it is. The wire gauges start getting crazy there, and I'm no uh, no lineman, so there we go. We get that all nice and tight. That doesn't buckle out. Gonna go on. Pretty much. There's a piston in here. I use this hydraulic pressure. Might as well get that almost there. Slide that through there like so. So underneath the truck, this is gonna be fun. All right, a little too, little too big. Like I said, I can always adjust. We'll go back down to 95 here. Like I said, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Not a smart one from Harbor Bay Freight, but it doesn't do wire this big. It only do double. It only do double zero. Nothing under that. All right. Let's try this one. want to get this clamp as close to the close to the actual insulation on this wire as possible. Let's try that. <laughs> you don't want to go crazy because then you'll break this. I only will go so far. I'm sure you're sure 16 tons. No problem breaking this cheap Chinese steel here. There you go, just like that. A nice crimp. And that'll get you out in the sun a little bit here, if you can see. Nice and tight. So. That looks like the one I'll be using here. I 
I don't mean no disrespect, but it's the way. I can't listen to you, I do this my own way. This is not a game, the game, the no, I don't play. And you was a game before, so now it's no way. No, no, no way. I figured, uh, I know most guys would clean themselves up, but you know what? I want, I want to look this way. This is, uh, this is how it is. This is how it is under a 25-year-old truck. I look great. Great. I got a scent of, uh, riding grease, I guess you could say, for a cologne right now. But, uh, yeah, a video cut out there when I was, um, recording that, uh, I guess doing those wires underneath there, but I think I got all, all I need it. I'm gonna uh, sit up here and I uh, guess I'm gonna show you where these wires are going on top of the starter, like I said. <sighs> you think it's gonna be a starter job and you get going and next thing you know, you, you see the Mickey Mouse crap that's been uh, fixed and put together down under here and next thing you know, it turns into fixing this little problem and this little problem. Um, the ABS wire over here comes out of the main harness on the engine, and I, you would think it'd be long enough to like run up, up along the firewall, back down, and into the harness that runs along the frame or something, but it's not. I have no idea how it was ran. I tried to figure it out three or four times, and I can't get anywhere close to probably where it was. So, I had to, uh, re-loom it, and here the loom I bought... I'm guessing, uh, I guess you got to really make sure the loom's already pre-cut. Apparently this loom, you cut it, you slice it down and, uh, open it up and it don't, it don't go very well. Um, you have to get pre-cut wire loom now, apparently. Uh, apparently I never knew they made uncut wire loom. Um, I guess, or, you know, you could always feed the wire over through there. So, uh, I rerouted this, uh, ABS wire and hooked it back up and zip tied it down nice and just uh, electrical taped up what was left of the wire loom it had. Uh, apparently, you know, oil and stuff gets on it and it just turns to like a rubber, a rubber more like a rubber than a than a plastic almost. But uh, it's on there. That's one wire I don't want to have rubbing through anywhere. So I'm gonna turn this around so you don't have to see my uh, ugly. Uh, right now and uh we'll uh we'll go over some of this crap all right so uh there's the abs wire basically re-loomed 
goes back down there up and over to there like I said I don't know why it comes out of the harness it comes up over here but it does so I'm gonna try to get this thing to get down there so you can see the wires on top of the starter here whoop, whoop. that wire I'm gonna I have no idea what the hell that goes to I think like accessories and stuff I it's uh, routed a lot better than it was before on the old star. It was just laying on top of it. But uh, at least now I can take it and zip tie it out of the way. That uh, harness right there. So there's where your power wires go into right there. There's your ignition. Um, there's a green wire over here that goes on top of there too. It hooks up to the power on that one. The 12 volts where it says 12 volts right there. And the other one goes underneath. Funny thing is the um, the end on that wire is more like a square, and it wouldn't uh, <laughs> and it wouldn't you know go on there because there's a shroud around it. Well, one of the guys borrowed the grinder last night out of here because uh, he asked me about grinding wheels. I guess he borrowed it last night, didn't use it, but he's going to use it tonight. And uh, I needed the grinder to grind the uh, square end off of that, and make it more round. So guess what? I was like SOL. So, unbolted the bench grinder <laughs> and sat it right down on top of that shock mount and ground it around. Yep, that was uh, very unconventional there, but it worked. It worked. Saved my butt. Because I sure wasn't cutting that and going driving the way I look right now and get another wire. I mean another uh, terminal end. So there's there's that. I'm almost done. I guess I'll sh show the uh, cleaned up wire underneath and everything. And then, um, I don't know. I guess bullshit about how much this cost me and how much money I probably saved, but probably not. Uh, but in reality, like the, most guys in the shop, they wouldn't tie this up real nice. They're in and out of there. They put the starter in. You tell them to put the starter in. That's what they're going to do. So that's uh, that's that. I was under here finishing up. I guess I'll just show you how. Oh, I don't know if I turned the light off under there or not, but hopefully it didn't because it did probably. Oh, no, I did. So I came up under here and uh, let's get some light on here. All right. So remember from the beginning of the video. How that all was versus how it is now I'd like to use big zip ties but I used what I had so couldn't find the big ones so I'm sitting here so I know I have something going on when I have a heavy load going up a hill it feels like the front front of the truck picks up and whatnot but that's the engine mount right there and I'm assuming it's tight I'm making assumptions though uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess I'm assuming that's tight right there. That big bolt and the big washer. Although, whatever I'm doing. There's a washer on top or something. I can spin it. So I'm assuming that's not tight enough. That engine mount. I paid. Uh, I think the guy. I think they charged me at this. Uh, I guess it's like a Cummins deal or their authorized Cummins repair facility. The guy. They charged me like uh, three grand to do them or twenty eight hundred dollars plus plus the uh, the what you call it the. Uh, so mad now I can't even remember the overhead. Well, look at this. Something missing there, huh? 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 Look. Huh? Wee. And there's supposed to be a. I don't know what's supposed to be there. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be that big washer, like on the other side. And guess what? You know what I think they did? I think they just didn't do their fucking job. Because if you feel up here, this bolt is sitting down, down, and it's sitting just in the goop. So I think they just stuck the bolt up there, took it down, and you know, just forgot to do their freaking job. 
I don't know. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe, uh, maybe it came loose. Uh, but usually, I would imagine if it came loose, it'd be the driver's side, because that's the one that comes up and down all the time, you know, from torque. So, there's, uh, there's a job for me, probably. I'm gonna have to try to buy that washer. And then, uh, I guess I'm gonna try to tighten that up myself. But first, I'm gonna check to see if, uh, if there's anything that's supposed to go on there, like another rubber bushing or something, or I, I would imagine so. There's supposed to be some kind of grommet or something that's supposed to go on there. So I don't know what the hell to do now. That's that's just freaking <sighs> irritates me to no no end. I'll tell you that. That's just uh, freaking ridiculous. That's why you do stuff yourself, apparently. So I might take it back there and be like, yo. So. Um, yeah, there's a bolt missing, or a washer, a bolt. It's almost like they were doing a job and they just forgot to do uh, do the other side. So, I'll uh, I'll be back with probably some other goofy thing to show you guys. It's uh, starting to get a little ridiculous. Like, oh, well, I guess, like that. That's pretty ridiculous, huh? Don't you think so? And it goes down, up around. It does the same thing on the other tank, on the other side, on the back of that tank. Um, I, I, to be honest, I have no idea why it's there. Um, <laughs> I could not tell you why it's there. Uh, you think there would just be a plug in there, but, so that too, I gotta fix that. So, I'll be back. Alright, well, this went along a lot longer than I want it. Big, big word of advice. Get a pair of jumper cables and check your starter first before you throw it in. I uh, I couldn't get this thing to start. I had no idea why. Screwed around with it, screwed around with it a hundred times. Here, apparently, there's there's two solenoids on these, this, the updated starter on these. I guess they're the uh, gear reduction starter or whatnot. Uh, the second solenoid, <laughs> there's supposed to be a ground wire coming off of it going onto the back of the starter. Well... Apparently, chinky eyes must have forgot. Luckily, I had an old jumper, a little jumper from the uh, the old starter, and so I had to pull all these wires off um, there for a second. I thought I screwed something up, but no, I I I didn't. So, see that one wire in the back there that loops around down under? Yeah, that's the uh, that's the wire they didn't have apparently hooked up. So, so uh, just for reference, this is the, the initial wire, goes to the top of the second solenoid, then there's your main solenoid, that your uh, both, uh, both power wire hook to, and down here, down here you got your grounds, you got a body ground down there, you got an engine ground, and uh, I think all together is three. Yeah, engine ground, body ground, and then the ground to the uh, batteries. So that's all of them. So, um, that wire is going to be there. It's not long enough. I have no idea how they had it routed, but that seems like the best place sitting on the, uh, sitting on the power, uh, the negative, negative, uh, wire <laughs> zip tied like that. Because before it was just laying on top. If you see the other video in the past, before I, uh, Got this all hooked up. So, yeah. So we're gonna fire this baby up. And, uh, hopefully call it a night. I got a lot of cleaning up to do now. Uh, something that should've took me maybe six hours tops. Cause, uh, there's that one bolt back there. It took me at least an hour to get it off between heating it up with a propane torch and then trying the impact gun on it. And I couldn't get any leverage on it with the, uh, half inch ratchet, so. Here we go. And now listen to this thing. I know I don't know if you ever seen my past videos or heard the truck starting this thing, man. Now fires right up. Like butter. Uh, 
I'm gonna stop this, turn the camera around. So that was uh that was fun. Uh when you have an older truck like this, and who knows who touched it, you can uh, end up having multiple problems or find multiple problems, and you're already under there. And you're already freaking dirty. You might as well fix them now. So, the only thing I need to do is either get a really long piece of uh, three. I think it's three eighths uh, airline and split it off to those tanks better than they have it. That's for sure. Or maybe I'll just get a piece of three eighths air uh, airline and a uh, butt connector and just butt connect what's there. So. That's it. Oh, and the engine mount. Yeah, I'm a little irritated by that. Just a bit. Actually, a lot more than a bit. So, I paid money for that. I already know what will happen. I'm going to call that shop up. And they're going to be like, well, that was six months ago. Anything could have happened. It could have wiggled loose. You know, not our problem. So, now I have to try to find that giant washer. Luckily, I got the nut. And I, I think there's a bushing under there, too. So now I have to either buy a whole freaking engine mount kit and just do the bottom part or not. Um, that's pretty much it for now. Um, I got a lot of cleaning to do. I had gloves on about 90% of the way, halfway through it. They just kept ripping, and by that time, I was just like, screw it. It's Your hands are already dirty, and your face is dirty and everything. Um... Do I recommend doing this? That's up to you. I, I lost a whole day's pay. Didn't have dinner tonight. Uh, dirty. Sweaty. Uh, yeah, you know what? Because uh, if you know what would have happened, I bet you if, if they would have bought this, if I would have, well, I would have gave them the starter because I wouldn't have them put the damn starter. And they probably would have said the starter was bad. They would have took it all out. Or they would have been smart and bench test at first, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and they would have charged me for all this. And they wouldn't have fixed anything. They wouldn't have zip-tied all the wires up nice. They wanted to make sure nothing was rubbing on the frame or rubbing on the uh, transmission pan there. So, realistically, the truck's more reliable now. Um... So far, any, anybody else that's touched this truck besides the guy that did the uh, the injector out there in Montana has effed shit up nonstop. Um, even the person that put the rear on, if, uh, the power divider, I had to pull the freaking drive shaft off and turn it around. I mean, it probably wouldn't hurt nothing, but uh, it, it was put in backwards. You know, the, uh, the uh, what do you want to call it, the... Uh, joint the shift joint the knuckle joint whatever the uh it lets it you know go in and out that was that used to be on the front at least when i was under there it was on the front <laughs> you know after it blew but they t turned it around and put it on the back so i mean i mean probably ain't gonna hurt nothing but still um it's just the way it was it came out of the factory it's gonna go back that way uh other th other mentions I don't know. I'd like to say, yeah, I did a good job, but this should have took like 10 hours. Uh, between, you know, wasting, wasting an hour getting the bolt off and then going around and finding all these other wires broken and damaged and, and uh, crimping this, crimping that, zip tying this, uh, you know, it turned into a fiasco. And uh, that's what you can expect when you buy an old truck. You know, if no one's done nothing to it or, you know, the wrong people have gotten in there and uh, fixed things, you know, quick and easy, cheap. Uh, that's the kind of problems you can run into. So, this is this is real as it gets. You know, I'm not going to clean myself up. This is, this is what's going to happen. If you just stay here and work straight, you know, underneath an old truck... And this is what you're going to look like. It just is. So, uh, that's it. I'm going to be getting out of here. I got all this to clean up. I'll back the truck out. Um, there's going to be more videos of me fixing crap. 
it might help somebody. Uh, so I know this is going to be long. I have to edit the hell out of it. But uh, yeah, until next time, guys. I'll see you.